Uh, welcome to DW. I'm Phil Gale. We start with breaking news from the Middle East. Israel says missiles have been launched from Iran towards Israel. Air raid sirens sounded across the country. Authorities said citizens have taken cover in bomb shelters. Israeli media reports that more than 100 missiles were launched from Iran. At least one official Iranian news agency has also shown images of missiles in the sky. Uh, Shani Razanis is uh, DW's uh, Middle East uh, analyst. Uh, welcome, uh, Shani. Uh, what are you hearing about what's going on? Well, first of all, it's still ongoing. Uh, lots of areas in Israel are under uh, asked to be uh, uh, under shelter. People are asked to stay close to uh, uh, you know safe rooms if they have some, or in community shelters if there are. Um, so far, what we've known. Um, according to the Israeli uh, IDF, is that there have been hundreds of missiles, ballistic missiles, shot from Iran towards Israel, uh, covering quite a, ri a, ri a wide range of areas in Israel. Most of them so far have been intercepted. We don't know of any direct hits, but this is still an ongoing event. We will have to monitor and see. Um, we know also Israeli officials are saying there will be a very harsh response from the side of Israel. We seem to be in a different, completely different scenario than the one we were almost six months Months ago, uh, on October, uh, oh sorry, on April 14th, when uh, that attack, uh, the first attack, basically breaking the red line of, of war between Israel and Iran, has uh, taken place. Um, yep. So, so these missiles from Iran, not a proxy. This is Correct. Iran getting directly. involved directly and announcing this is this has been our our making if israel will respond we will retaliate again with more of that and we see also the the you know iran has has learned its lessons from the previous attack in april that i just mentioned in a sense that last time there were many uh, drones which take much longer and which also israel had a lot of time to prepare for uh, and the most efficient tools they have are the ballistic missiles they take around 10 to 12 minutes to reach to, you know, Israel from Iran much faster, still long enough time for Israeli air defense, um, different, you know, uh, they have different technologies, also airplanes, along with American uh, forces and other, you know, Western coalition partners that try to help Israel. So still enough time for, to respond, but definitely not the same as the nine hours that Israelis had last time. Um, and Iran is standing behind this, and Israel so far in the name of uh, unnamed officials say we will respond. It's going to be a harsh response, basically breaking the equation that we have seen in place so far. Talk to us more uh, uh, about that, because, as you say, this, this changes the game. Where before we had a certain element of tit-for-tat, if we do this, Correct. we will respond in this way, but we won't take it beyond a certain uh, line. That's now There were unofficial but very clear lines of conduct of what are the borders drawn if only, you know, both sides take to, for example, military bases and not... Uh, target civilians, if they keep to a certain perimeter and don't go beyond, so forth. The, the breaking of those rules, you know, if you ask Iranians, they will say it's actually not our fault. This is Israel who chose to do that. If you look at what Israel did in Lebanon in the last two weeks, you will see that Israelis have decided to go all kind of wild, all in, and we were forced to respond. Israel, and you know, the way they see it is like we've had a lot of patience for this to go on for a long time, and we had to break uh, away from this equation because it wasn't working in our benefit. We saw our over 60,000 Israelis still, you know, stranded away from their homes. We saw no, no uh, near end, and we had to take the initiative and be more forceful, more aggressive. All right, let's let's talk about the action that Israel says it has taken uh, on the uh, border with uh, Lebanon. It says it's carrying out limited uh, raids, which has been disputed by uh, Hezbollah. Uh, what are you hearing? Well. We know, you know today the Israeli IDF has presented what they claim to be a plan for ground invasion from Hezbollah to the Israeli side of the border. Basically, a plan similar to the one we've seen conducted by Hamas in the, in the southern border and from Gaza, uh, infiltrating Israeli uh, local villages along the border, taking hostages, killing people, civilians. Israelis say, Israel, of course, say that's been in the making for a long time. And therefore, they need to attack that line along the border in order to prevent any uh, Hezbollah operatives and all of their infrastructure. And that was building up there for, for that scenario of invasion into Israel, they had to operate on along the border in order to eradicate any possibility for Hezbollah to ever, uh, you know, fulfill that plan. Okay, so the world now is looking at this escalating crisis and saying, well, one of the first questions is, what is the Israeli objective? In if it does go in on the ground, 
in Lebanon. What is it looking to achieve? What does success look like? Well, first, bringing back the, the Israeli citizens who, who were living along the border up until October 7th and have been, you know, forced to leave for so long. So this is one thing. And, for, of course, the, the push that we've seen Israel do in the last weeks was in order to... They never officially said that, like they said with Hamas, but they wish to eradicate Hezbollah as a military force. You know, there's no doubt there's also have a political arm, there's the ideology behind it, but Israel says we will no longer accept that threat lurking uh, on our border and just accept it as we were willing to accept it for many, many years. Same goes with Iran. When you look at the, at the, at the line that he is aggressive, Israel now basically operating against Hezbollah, Iran's main for proxy, is also in order to send a message to Iran. If you want to make this happen, if you want to talk about fighting, bring it on, let's fight this fight, and we're going to defeat you. We're very uh, confident in our ability. We're going to, you know, this is Israel sort of changing positions. If you look at it, you know, zooming out, changing position from defense mode that Israel seemed to be in starting October 7th, it took Israel by surprise to try and to get the initiative, take the initiative, and flip the order, saying we are now the aggressors, we take the initiatives, and we're going to set the rules, new rules, for this very, very dangerous, so it seems, Middle East. Okay. For now, uh, Shani Razanis, uh, thank you so much. You're welcome, Phil. Uh, we'll have uh, more from uh, uh, Shani at the top of the next hour in uh, Ask DW when you'll get your chance to put your questions to her and a panel of experts. For now, uh, let's go to uh, Tel Aviv where we can join uh, our correspondent, uh, Tanya. Uh, sorry, we're going to Jerusalem where we can join our correspondent, uh, Tanya Kramer. Uh, welcome, uh, Tanya. Um, so we now believe that there are rockets are on the way uh, to Israel uh, from Iran. What are you hearing? Well, I mean, we could hear it very clearly, and actually the sirens, this attack is apparently not over. So what happened here in the past hour, so, you know, the whole building where we are in, you know, everybody is now down in the shelter. There's a shelter in the basement. And I was just uh, also going up and down because, uh, you know, once you, you're out of the shelter, um, uh, the, the sirens go off. I think people here told me that, you know, they've never experienced something like that massively. I mean, you could see on the map what's actually the alert system. All Israel was red, basically. Um, the missiles uh, that came and uh, we hear from the army, they're asking people to still stay next to their shelter or in the shelter because they are saying uh, that this uh, attack is not over. I do not have an overview right now uh, where the missiles, uh, you know, what were the targets, uh, but we could be hearing uh, a lot of interceptions, uh, a lot of booms. Uh, uh, there is certainly impact of shrapnel. Uh, certainly there might be also impact of some missiles. We have to wait and see because right now what people are doing is basically uh, staying in the shelters because uh, this is a really, really massive attack. Uh, with missiles uh, uh, that is coming down here in Israel right now. And what word from uh, Israel's leaders at this point, Tanya? Well, we just heard from them uh, in the, you know, just leading up to this attack and all day already. I mean, at two o'clock local time here, the home front guidelines were uh, suddenly changed. And that included also the center, uh, like Jerusalem, uh, Tel Aviv. Uh, but I have to say there are also missile alerts, although there is no system there uh, directly in the occupied West Bank. So this is, you know, this is coming from all over uh, here uh, in the area. And at that point, you know, there was already the anticipation that something is going on. And then we heard uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in a video uh, calling on people to follow these guidelines very strictly to stay inside, to be close to their shelters. And then just a few minutes again before actually the first uh, alerts went off, also the army again uh, calling on people to stay. So there was some kind of uh, alert to this. And it mainly seems, you know, all over Israel, but also a lot uh, uh, directed here at, you know, the, the bigger cities. But whether this these uh, missiles were directed to uh, specific targets, like military targets, that what was, you know, said before. Um, so I, I, I don't know yet at this point, but at the moment it seems at least uh, we don't know yet whether there's another barrage of missiles uh, uh, on its way. OK, we'll leave it there. We'll let you get to safety, Tanya. Thank you so much for uh, joining us and talking us through that. Uh, Tanya Kramer in Jerusalem.